I'm always looking for ways to creatively shake things up around here. And so when the Hippie Crafter sent me black canvas and acrylic paint pens, I was ready, I mean ready, for the challenge. Now I've been dreaming about painting the tulip fields of the Netherlands ever since my trip there in the spring of 2019. It was the last international adventure of mine before the you know what happened. And now when I think of tulips, I think of a carefree time of, well, yeah, I think of the time before. So these supplies are cool, but I was determined to also incorporate watercolor because, well, you know, my creative existence begins and ends with watercolor. So I'm gonna do this twice. There were two photos I couldn't decide between and I've got a bunch of supplies, so why not? This first photo is of a hyacinth field and oh my gosh, I'll never forget the smell. I mean. The, the scene was one thing, but the smell of being in this space was just incredible. So here's what I did. It just felt like the right thing to do instinctually. I sprayed down this canvas. I wanted it to become more absorbent. So I thought spraying it down and letting it soak in would be a good thing. And I'm glad I did it. I am using one of my newest handmade watercolor palettes. It's called Ocean Paper, and they're definitely more opaque watercolor. So it's gonna work really well on the black surface. So if you're trying this, definitely use like a gouache or if you have a watercolor brand that's more opaque, that's what you're gonna wanna use. You know what, friends? I wanna make it very clear. This is not a realistic landscape exercise. This is expression, this is experimentation, and if we get something out of it that we like and that makes sense and that is fun and beautiful that we wanna show to other people, that's a bonus. But the real power of what we're doing with this right now is being in the moment and what you're learning every step of the way, not the end result. I'm mapping out the basic shapes. So thinking about the perspective, that receding lines, all those receding lines going back to the horizon line. And friends, I don't have it perfect. I am not perfect on perspective, but got a good start here. And I'm going to just rough in the color. And at this stage in the game, my thinking is I need to just rough in areas, get areas saturated with watercolor so that then I can go over top when things are starting to dry and add detail with the acrylic markers. Here's the thing, friends, with something like this. This is pure experimentation. I've never done this before. I have no intention of creating something that I would even want to sell or show or use for art licensing. I'm doing this just to have fun. And so please know that you deserve and you need to give yourself moments like this. It doesn't have to be acrylic markers on a black canvas. Your moment of experimentation can be any time, any way that you are in a situation, in a circumstance with art supplies that you are unfamiliar with. So hear me, unfamiliarity, the newness of art supplies is huge when it comes to bashing fear on your art journey. And you might ask me why? Why is using some new art supply that I've never used before, what's that actually gonna do for me artistically and creatively? Here's the thing, if you can make something that's halfway beautiful, or even a quarter beautiful, okay? If you can make something that you're reasonably happy with and proud of out of materials that are completely foreign to you, that is gonna give you tremendous confidence moving forward. When it comes to how I'm technically approaching this, you'll notice that I am creating these kind of like upside down U's or C's or however you want to call it, but they're kind of like little arc shapes that are repeated again and again and again. And that's giving my rows of hyacinths kind of a sense of volume and depth. So I'm liking that kind of brush stroke, um, even though I'm going to be going over top of that again with the marker later on. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, but I do know that the marker is going to be my second layer. Again, working with a limited palette. So I'm thinking about the black of my canvas as being my darkest areas when I look at the photo. So if my darkest, darkest areas, like in between the rows of hyacinths, I'm letting the black of the canvas show through to denote those really dark areas that I'm referencing in my photo. And then the lightest, brightest areas, even if it's a very, very light pink, 
are becoming white in this particular scenario. All right, let's speed through this and kind of show you where we're going with it. Friends, this isn't about exactly how to do the thing. This is more about inspiring you to get uncomfortable with new supplies. All right, getting into those markers, friends. I just wanna give you a little heads up of how to get these markers started. I'm sure it's fairly similar regardless of the brand, but you gotta shake the living daylights out of these bad boys. And then the tips of these markers have that kind of spring effect where you press down and they kind of disappear into the barrel of the pen. And so you keep pressing up and down, up and down, up and down until the paint starts to release. Some markers release the paint very quickly and kind of startlingly. And some of the markers took a little bit longer, but once you get them going, you are good. Now this is a kind of a, a blunt tip. There's not a real good fine point to them, but I'm, I'm down with it. I'm making lots of different marks, squiggly marks, dots, loopy doopy marks, swirly cues. You name it, I'm playing around with it. This is just about being loose, instinctual, keeping your arms loose, keeping your shoulders from getting too tight or stiff. If your jaw is clenched right now because you're nervous, unclench please and enjoy this process. Remember, I'm using a limited palette here. So I'm making quick decisions about where I'm using blues, purples, light blues, light purples, pinks, and whites. The colors that I've chosen from the marker set are quite similar in value. And what that means is most of them are kind of similar in terms of how light or how dark they are on the value scale. So I know going in that because I've used very, very limited colors from this set, that I'm not gonna get a ton of highs and lows, meaning a ton of contrast. And that's okay. Again, it's an experiment. Here are three tips for you when you are diving into a creative experiment. These tips are meant so that you can enjoy the experience without fretting about the final results. Tip number one, set your expectations. Tell yourself going in that you are about to make some ugly art. Even if that's not what ends up happening, just begin all of this knowing, yep, Christy, you're gonna paint some ugly today and it's okay. Set your expectations. Number two, don't prepare too much, don't sketch. Just get right into it. Sometimes, especially when we are meaning to just sit down and experiment, all that preparation, all that sketching, all that trying to get really, really good at something before you actually make the real art, can be stress inducing. So my second tip for really enjoying this experimental type of artwork is just dive in. Tip number three for getting the most out of an experimental artwork creation session is be prepared to create the art more than once. Oftentimes when I'm experimenting, I feel really good. I get into that first painting and then towards the end of it, I'm starting to feel like things are just, ugh, just meh right? And instead of stopping there and ending with that feeling and potentially carrying that kind of negative feeling into my next creative endeavor, I'm going to create the painting again or a version of it again. And hopefully that second painting will leave me feeling more inspired. Because ultimately at the end of a creative experiment, you don't want to be feeling blue. You want to be feeling excited and invigorated. Okay, I lied. I have four tips. Tip number four, work smaller. Experiments require repetition. And like I mentioned with tip number three, you may want to do this a second, third or fourth time. So if you work smaller, you're going to feel free to try it two, three, four plus times and not feel like you have to be doing this for eight hours to accomplish that. All right, back to my hyacinth experiment. I'm going back in now with watercolor and the brush. And these markers are water-based. So when they're still damp on the page, I'm able to actually mingle them with my watercolors, which is super fun. I'm even using my hands a little bit because, well, why not? Let's see what happens. Is this my favorite painting I've ever created? No. Is it a departure from my typical style? Uh, you betcha. But does the good I'm feeling come from the fact that this aligns very well with the Christie style? No. 
The good that I'm feeling right now from creating this is just that endorphin rush that I'm getting from trying something new and feeling like I'm on the edge of creating something that I love or maybe something that I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? But that's exciting. That's what this painting session is all about. And also, I gotta be honest, I really wanna paint a Christy flower composition on one of these black canvases. So there's that. <laughs> I think there's this misconception that if we're experimenting, it needs to be in a sketchbook. There's so much pressure put on the idea of a sketchbook, and I've never been a big sketchbook person. Let's see how many times Christy can say sketchbook, but seriously, I love the idea that an experimentation can be a standalone project that you invest a little bit more time in. And let's be honest, a sketchbook usually only has one type of paper, one color paper, and so your ability to really spread your creative wings is a little bit limited. I know I'm gonna get some pushback for my lack of falling in love with sketching and sketchbooks, but you know, it is what it is. I felt like I needed a punch of contrast, so I decided to bring in a really bright red in a few spots, in a few moments. And honestly, while it is a definitely a weird choice, it gave me that sparkle and that brightness that I felt like I was lacking. And I also felt like things were a little too cotton candy, pastel-y, and so I'm bringing in this toned down gold brownish color to kind of give a balance to the sweetness of this color palette. <laughs> okay, friends, are you having fun? If you are, hit the boop, that's the like button, because we want other people to get in on this creative party and also head to comments. Are you thinking I'm absolutely out of my mind or are you like running to the store to grab your black canvas? I wanna hear all about it. Okay, I'm putting a fork in her. She's as done as done could be. I hope I said the right colloquialism. I'm known for messing those up, but anywho, here she is. Like I said, not my favorite thing in the world, but I had fun making marks, figuring out the values, and uh, messing around with some new supplies. But I'm feeling like I want to give this a try again. So here we go, round two. All right, I'm feeling energized. I'm ready to give this a go again, and I adore this photo. I literally remember my son running through this field. It's like one of my favorite memories from travel. Okay, okay, okay. Just because you asked, here's a photo. <laughs> okay, here's another tip. Take a few minutes and think about the first piece you created. Think about how you might wanna change things. Now don't spend an hour in this process. That's not the point. Like a minute, tops, quick, rapid fire brainstorming, what you wanna do differently next and go. So here's where my head's at after painting number one. I kind of felt like all of my marks were too similar all over the place very repetitive. So I really wanna keep things interesting with this one. I also felt like I tried to cover up my base layer of watercolor too much with the acrylic markers. So keeping an eye on that. And I wanna leave more of the black canvas shining through because that's what's most interesting about these new supplies I'm using. Okay, so what was that? Maybe 15 seconds worth of brainstorming? Just perfect. Let's do this. Same rules apply here. I've dampened the canvas, and this time I'm starting with my half inch dagger again, but with some yellow watercolor, and I'm mapping out the basic composition. So thinking really intently on that perspective where all lines converge back at the horizon line, and even exaggerating how finely and perfectly those lines converge back there to really hit home that beautiful horizon perspective that makes this photo what it is. I'm going in with some white now, still in the watercolor zone, and I'm using a little bit of a dry brush technique where I'm letting my pigment just run out and kind of scrubbing it along the surface of the canvas. This is gonna create, number one, a really nice base layer for everything, and also just some interesting texture. Going right in with that bright, 
tulip poppy like red and again letting it scrub out and fill in the space of the black canvas a bit remember this time around i'm really trying to not overwork all the areas with a lot of detail when this is all said and done so i'm being more mindful of my brush strokes how much pigment is on my brush how much water is on my brush and most importantly i'm being very mindful of leaving the canvas bare in places or almost bare now i'm bringing in one of my favorite greens from this palette it's called emerald it's just lovely creamy medium green so gorgeous and i'm using it pretty heavy right now on the brush so loading up lots of it going back into the yellow and just trying to think about these shapes. These are elongated triangles, basically, with the very tip or point or top of the triangle going back to that horizon line where the sky meets the land. All right, getting into the foreground a bit, big strokes. The very, very foreground is what the eye really hits first in a lot of ways, so I want that to be what feels closest to the viewer and what is the largest. Rinsing my brush and I just feel like I want to head into the sky. I'm using some very broad directional strokes, again still in watercolor land here, starting with the blue, getting into the white. And notice how I'm really trying to create direction. In my inspiration photo, those clouds seem to be swirling and moving in a upward left direction and I'm trying to create that look with the bounce and swirl of my brush and the overall direction that the lines when they all come together visually are taking. Same idea here applies. I do have quite a bit of pigment on my brush but in places I am letting that pigment run out and it's becoming a little bit more of a dry brush technique. I love watercolor on materials like canvas, things you wouldn't expect. And black surfaces for watercolor are incredible. So I really hope you give it a try. I'm gonna list supplies down below so you'll have everything you need. Friends, let me know in comments how you're feeling about this. How do you think this is gonna work? What do you think might be your stumbling blocks if you're going to try this experiment? Because I'd love to get that conversation going in comments so we can help each other out bringing in a little pink in the foreground, just touches, and going back towards the horizon line with some dab, dab, dabs, repetitive dabs, quick, quick, quick staccato movements, up and down, up and down quickly. And again, just keeping a very mindful eye on those elongated triangles that are all converging back at the horizon line on the right hand side. Overall, my strokes in the foreground are significantly larger and more broad. And as I go back to the horizon, things are getting smaller. My strokes are much more detailed and tiny. This is a great way to differentiate, to create a foreground and a distant background. So it's a visual differentiation that really helps the composition getting more into the foreground. I'm deciding that I'm using more detail in the foreground and more detail in the very background. And the in-between is where I'm gonna let the eye kind of fill in the blanks. But again, remember that detail in the foreground, more brush strokes, more going on, but the brush strokes overall are larger. Now you might be wondering, where is this acrylic marker, this paint pen gonna come in? It's coming, I promise, it's coming. Don't forget friends, as you are painting, whether you are sitting down for a quote, serious painting, or you are experimenting, don't forget to be kind to yourself. Give yourself audible comments, say it out loud. This looks really cool, I really love this part. And if you don't really know what I mean, I have a whole video about this mindset where you need to be kind to yourself as you're being creative and compliment yourself. So check the link below. I'm going in now with another level of detail. I'm using the curved edge of my dagger facing down with this kind of yellowish green. You choose your favorite. Just doing a little bit of this detailing coming out from the very left side here. And I'm dabbing up and down, straight up and down with light pressure to keep the final mark kind of skinny and grass-like. And I'm gonna repeat that a little bit just above. I love that look really here a compositional rule i don't like to use the word rule but it is what it is friends 
Keeping a variety of strokes is so powerful for your composition. Keep that in mind. You want to have variety. It's the spice of life, so of course it's the spice of your canvas. In this painting, I'm actually rinsing my brush quite a bit more than I normally do, I'm really trying to keep these colors clean because I am working with opposites. I'm working with basically reds and greens. And so I have been rinsing my brush quite a bit. So keep that in mind as you're watching because you're not seeing the rinsing part. All right, friends, this is it. This is it for the watercolor layer. I am in love with this. The balance is just what I was hoping for. And so even though I'm really loving this, I'm in the moment, I'm feeling the feels, I'm going to resist the urge to continue to fuss on this, bringing out those markers. And the markers in this version on this canvas are all about structure. So not a, a lot of fine detail with these markers this time. Last canvas, it was all about the teeny tiny scratchy fine details everywhere. And I wasn't as happy with it. So this time I'm going the opposite direction, really defining those big tulips in the foreground. Remember, big bold strokes in the foreground, teeny tinier strokes in the background, and then of course in between. So I've got this beautiful poppy red marker and I'm really laying it on with bigger bolder strokes in the foreground and a few tiny ones in the background but I am just keeping myself in check because I'm really excited right now in this painting I don't want to overwork things bringing in the yellow marker, a little bit of detailing. At this point, you are not reinventing the wheel. You've established the composition. You've established the basic shapes. You are just accenting. And just a friendly reminder that this is water-based paint in these markers. So when your canvas is damp with watercolor and you pop this marker onto the surface, it's going to explode into that dampness. And I love that effect bringing that red back in for a bold addition right at the end here, coming in from the left-hand side. Look at that red strong line. I love that. You know what that does? It helps carry the eye back to that ever important convergence at the horizon line where all those rows of tulips meet. And I love that. Getting back into the sky, just another layer, a little bit more detail. I am pretty wild with my skies, friends, and this one is no different. I love what's happening naturally with the dampness of the surface of the canvas, the opacity of the watercolor I'm using, and then of course the acrylic, the heavier body of the acrylic paint from these markers is creating some really cool textures and I'm letting it do its thing. I'm not fighting it. Another tip about experimenting is let your materials run the show. Don't try to overpower the materials. When you're using new supplies and you're very unfamiliar with them, let them lead. It's a dance and your supplies should lead, especially when you've never used them before. That's when you're going to make the most discoveries. Now, friends, I hope you've had a blast. Let me know by giving this video a boop. That's a like, and it lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're having fun on this channel, and I hope you are. Also, let's head into comments. Let me know which painting was your favorite. Was it the purple hyacinth landscape, or was it the red and yellow tulips? All right, I cannot wait to hear which one wins favorite. There are a few more really important points that I want you to learn about composition in landscapes. So head on over to this video and make sure you don't miss a beat. Happy painting, friends. Mm -hmm.